Lamentations chapter number 3. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanseth us from all sin. Thank you, Lord, that we can come out on this Wednesday night and worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, for the scriptures. Lord, without them, we would have never known you framed the worlds. We'd have never known your name. We'd have never known that there was a way of salvation, and that salvation is in Christ. Lord, we're thankful for the Bible. We're thankful for the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. We're thankful, Lord, for the good singing we've enjoyed. We're thankful for the good fellowship we've enjoyed. We're thankful, Lord, that now we can center our hearts on the Word of God. Lord, I know many have had a busy week. I know that many have faced things this week. Many have worked even today. Lord, they may be tired in body, but Lord, uh, they had a desire to come to the house of God. I pray you'd bless them for it. I pray you'd enlighten our minds to truth. I pray you'd challenge our hearts. I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd just sit down amongst us for the next few minutes, uh, put a hedge about us, uh, bind the powers of hell, uh, and, Lord, we do plead the blood of Christ over this place tonight. And I pray you'd speak to our hearts. Lord, you know the need of every heart tonight. And I pray that every need would be met in Christ. Lord, if conviction is needed, bring conviction. Lord, if uh, confirmation is needed, bring confirmation. If comfort is needed, bring comfort. We pray, Father, that your perfect will would be accomplished amongst us tonight. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord... uh, You would be with those that are sick. Many would desire to be here tonight, but Lord, uh, they're sick. I do pray for uh, Miss Marcy. I pray, Lord, you'd touch her. I pray for Brother Bob. You'd touch him. I do pray, Father, for uh, Miss Tammy. You'd heal her leg. I pray, Father, for Brother Mike that's facing surgery. You'd be with him. I pray for Brother Ed. You'd continue to touch him. Thank you, Lord. He has no infection. That, Lord, that's an answer to prayer. We bless you for it. I pray for Miss Crystal. You continue to touch her and help her. Lord, thank you for her witness. And, God, I pray for her doctor. God, I pray that, Lord, uh, the questions would lead to him putting his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, I do pray that, uh, Lord, you'd be with those that are providentially hindered, those that would desire to be here tonight, uh, but because they have to work or because... uh, Lord, they're traveling or because they're uh, 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 sick or shut in, I pray for them that, God, you would touch them and help them. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd help me to convey the thought that you gave me. And, God, may it resonate in the hearts of these in our midst. uh, And, God, may Jesus be glorified through it all. And, Father, we'll not fail to thank you and praise you for it, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus that we ask these things, amen and amen. I want to draw, uh, draw your attention to the fact that Lamentations is a book written because uh, of what is going on in the Israel and in the life of Jeremiah. Jeremiah has preached now for some uh, 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 close to four decades. Uh, he has preached, he has warned, uh, he has told Israel to repent uh, or they'd perish. Uh, he told Israel... Uh, They needed to turn from their idols and turn back to God. Uh, They needed to seek the Lord. Uh, He told them that judgment was coming, uh, that they were going to be overthrown, uh, that they were going to be taken away into captivity, uh, and they ignored him. Uh, They mocked him. Uh, They put him in stocks outside of the temple. Uh, They put him in a dungeon. Uh, uh, They did everything they could uh, except kill the man of God. Uh, And now uh, uh, everything he preached has come to fruition. Uh, Israel's been carried away into captivity into Babylon. And here Jeremiah is lamenting them not repenting. I can see 
He preached his heart out for some 40 years. And Brother Brian, there's no record in the Bible where he ever had one convert. 40 years of preaching without a convert, I'd have to say, most people would say, that's a failure. But you see, he'd done exactly what God told him to do. Amen. And in God's eyes, he was successful. But in his own eyes, I can see him lamenting. I know from my own life, and I'm sure these other preachers that are here will tell you, you study, you try to get the mind of God, you, you believe you've got the message, you get up and you give everything you've got, uh, and it seems like it doesn't go anywhere, it seems like people uh, aren't interested, it seems like the words come out of your mouth, uh, but they don't get much farther than the pulpit, uh, and by the time the service is over, you feel like you missed it, you feel like a failure, you feel like you wasted God's time and the people's time, uh, and here Jeremiah's feeling that way over 40 years of preaching. He's known as the weeping prophet. In the book of Lamentations, he is weeping. In the book of Lamentations, God is weeping because his people did not obey. And he had to allow them to be overthrown. He had to send chastisement, which will last 70 years, before his people will turn their hearts back to him. And I say through all of Jeremiah's lamenting, through all of his reflection of his preaching and all that's transpired in his ministry, he begins to look deep within himself. I want you to notice that after looking at all of it, he begins to feel betrayed. Look at verse number 3 again. Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. Look at verse 7. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. Also when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. Look at verse 12. He hath bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. Jeremiah is feeling like God has betrayed him. That God has purposely singled him out to inflict him. He feels betrayed. Notice also that his feeling of betrayal leads to him becoming bitter. Look, if you will, in verse number 5. He hath built it against me and compassed me with gall and travail. That word gall is the same word that we use, the gall of bitterness. Look in verse 15. He hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. He is bitter because he feels betrayed. He's bitter because the people did not listen and now... Uh, Many of them have been slaughtered, and the ones that weren't slaughtered have been carried off to become slaves uh, to Babylon. Uh, they can no longer worship God, not that they were anywhere, anyway, but now they're in a place that is totally given to idolatry, uh, and his betrayal has led him to become bitter. Can I say bitterness is a dangerous thing, friend? The writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter number 12, he said, lest the root of bitterness. Can I say, uh, bitterness just doesn't come and go. It takes root, uh, and that root gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, and if you're not careful and you don't do business with God, my dear friends, uh, uh, you can never get over that bitterness. Uh, you can never get all of that bitterness out of you. Uh, the only one that can extract bitterness from our hearts is Almighty God. Uh, he feels betrayed. He's become bitter. I've seen people get bitter. Get bitter because of a loss of a loved one. Get bitter because of a loss of a job. Get bitter because of a, a spouse walking out on them. 
get bitter because uh, something didn't go the way they thought it should go uh, and it consumes them uh, and the more they try to ignore it the more that they think on it uh, and it begins to control him, them uh, he who angers you controls you uh, and my dear friends that bitterness takes over your life uh, Jeremiah is bitter Jeremiah feels betrayed can I say that Jeremiah becomes broken Look at verse number 4. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. Look at verse number 11. He hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He hath made me desolate. Look at verse 16. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. Uh, he hath covered me with ashes. Uh, look at verse number 18. Uh, and I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Uh, can I say, uh, he came uh, 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 to the place where his bitterness uh, had overcome him, uh, and he realized uh, he was a broken vessel. Hmm. Now, can I say, it is a horrible thing for a child of God to get to the point where you are a broken vessel, where you can hold no water, but can I say, recognizing that you are a broken vessel is a good thing? Because then you can get some help. The danger is coming week in and week out, uh, coming to the house of God, going through the motions, trying to read your Bible, uh, but you never get anything out of it, trying to pray, but your prayers don't hit the ceiling, uh, 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 and just going through the motions, trying to convince yourself you're okay, you're okay, and all the while you become more and more bitter, uh, you become more and more uh, 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 feeling like uh, uh, God is against you, uh, and friend, uh, uh, going through the motions, is not the same as enjoying the blessings of God. Uh, and when you come to the end of yourself and realize, uh, my dear friends, that you're not where you need to be, that's a good place to be uh, because then you can get where you need to be. Uh, and that's the center of God's will. In the first 20 verses of Lamentation chapter number 3, you find the word my 14 times. Now that's not including the words me, the words I, or the words mine. Just the little two-letter word my is mentioned 14 times. The definition of that word my really means mine own. Jeremiah had a my problem. He had a my problem. He... He was looking inwardly, and everything that he saw, he thought was an attack against his own. Mine own. My, 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 my. We get in trouble when my begins to rule in our lives. We get to thinking that we are owed something. We get to thinking we deserve something better than what we are facing. Again, his whole outlook is mine own. And can I say, when you and I begin to grasp ownership of our own life and think that God has betrayed us, we're in trouble. I want to preach on this thought tonight. I want to preach on relinquishing ownership. Amen. Relinquishing ownership. Everywhere he said my, he's saying my own, mine own, mine own, mine own. In verse 18, and I said my strength, mine own strength, and my hope, mine own hope is perished from the Lord. He's blaming the Lord because he's not where he thinks he needs to be. He's owning his own life. So therefore, he thinks God needs to cater to him. Relinquishing ownership, uh, in other words, could be said this way. Fighting to look upward as opposed to looking inward when misery, doubt, and fear is all you see. All he could see was the misery. All he could see was the fear. All he could see was the doubt. Uh, he began to look inwardly, and he thought that he was owed something. Uh, 
My dear friends, uh, too many people that attend our churches uh, uh, week in and week out, uh, all they see is themselves, uh, all they see is their circumstances, uh, all they see is what they think is owed them. Uh, my dear friends, uh, we don't need an inward look, uh, we need an upward look. Uh, uh, an upward look will change all of that. Uh, an upward look will help us uh, uh, to see uh, everything in our uh, life uh, was given by the hand of God and He has a purpose uh, and He has a plan uh, and blessed be the name of the Lord. I'll rise from the ashes uh, and if I don't, uh, I'll go out praising the Lord because I'm faring far better than I deserve. Uh, but most people don't have that look. They don't come to church with an upward look. They come to church with an inward look. I want you to notice a few things in this chapter that may help us to relinquish ownership. Can I say, first of all, notice the transition. Now, the first 20 verses, it's all about him. My, 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 my. But look at verse 21. He said, well, let's back up verse 20. My soul hath them still in remembrance. What? Hope. The Lord. The promises of God. He said, My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Verse 21, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Uh, can I say that the transition begins uh, when he gets to uh, realizing he's broken, uh, when he realized uh, that God has humbled him for such a time as this, uh, and in his humble estate, uh, he begins to recall the things of God. Uh, it's no longer about him. Uh, it's no longer about his circumstances. Uh, it's no longer about his troubles. Uh, it's no longer about uh, what's going on in the nation. Uh, it's about what God has done for him and what God has spoken to him. Uh, it's about the promises God has given him and he says when I recall this to my mind I have hope there is a transition you know why it's good to come to the house of God hey your circumstances may be a mess you may be looking inwardly you may feel betrayed you may have bitterness rising up in your soul and you may even come to the place where you're broken but when you can come and sit under good godly singing and sit under the preaching and teaching of the word of God uh, you are reminded that you are in this world but not of this world uh, and you can find hope uh, in the midst of your sorrow hope in the midst of your pain uh, you can find strength in the midst of your trouble uh, and something begins to transition and change in your life uh, a transition happens all of a sudden uh, he quits looking around and he starts to look a little higher. We see a transition. Notice, if you will, the truth comes out. Look in verse number 22. He said, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. Before this, he's looking around, he sees only darkness. He says, he's not brought me into any light. Uh, he says, I'm hedged in darkness. Uh, he says, he's broken my teeth. He's done this, he's done that, he's done that. Uh, and all of a sudden, after the transition, uh, truth sets in. Uh, it's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. Uh, he said, we deserve to die. Uh, we deserve all the troubles that God has allowed to come in here. Uh, uh, it's only of His mercies that we're not dead. Uh, it's only of His mercies He's given us another opportunity, uh, another day, uh, another chance. Uh, and He goes on to say this, uh, because His compassions uh, fail not. Uh, what a blessing to know, uh, regardless of what's going on in this world, uh, regardless of what's uh, happening in, uh, in other parts of the world, uh, regardless of what's happening in D.C., uh, regardless of what's happening in Frankfurt, uh, regardless of what tra 
tragedy or travail is going on, uh, what a blessing to know uh, we are fair and better than we deserve. Uh, uh, we ought to all be in hell tonight, uh, but I'm not going to hell uh, because the Lord's compassions fail not. Uh, hey, he's still allowing the gospel to be preached. Uh, folks are still hearing the truth, uh, and folks are still believing on the Lord. Uh, aren't you glad that God didn't cut off the spigot the day before you heard it? Uh, hey, uh, aren't you glad uh, he's still showing mercy? Uh, he's still allowing it to rain on the just and the unjust alike. Uh, what a blessing to know the truth. Uh, God loves sinners, uh, and God will save sinners. Hallelujah. Uh, Listen, I don't know why Miss Crystal's having to go through what she's going through, and this is the second time. Different uh, uh, diagnosis, but she's going through it. But I tell you, if that doctor gets saved uh, and he leads other people to Christ, uh, it'll be worth everything she's had to face. Can I say, when we relinquish ownership, uh, we realize we're in God's hands and we're just instruments that He can use uh, uh, to change people's lives. Uh, that's what it's all about. The problem is we think too highly of ourselves. We're nothing more than hammers, wrenches, screwdrivers, tools in the Master's hand. In a terrible, tumultuous world that he knows how to use to bring somebody else to him. My dear friends, when you get over yourself, you'll come to the truth that God's mercy is still available and his compassion fails not. We see the transition. We see the truth. What a verse. We also see the trustworthy one. Look at verse 23. He says, They are new every morning. What is compassions? Look what he says. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Earlier in the chapter, he's blaming God. Earlier in the chapter, he feels betrayed. Earlier in the chapter, he's getting bitter. Earlier in the chapter, he's finding fault in God. But now he realizes that God's mercies are new every day, uh, and great uh, is the Lord's uh, faithfulness. Uh, can I say, uh, you can trust the Lord, uh, whether it's sunshine uh, or whether it's storming. Uh, you can trust the Lord uh, if the sea is smooth. Uh, or if the sea is rocky, uh, you can trust the Lord uh, if you're on the mountaintop uh, or if you're in a valley below the valley. Uh, the Lord is faithful. Uh, and friend, He knoweth the way that I take. Uh, and when I come forth, uh, I shall be as gold. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, you can trust Him. Uh, you can believe on Him. Uh, hey, God uh, will never, ever fail you. Uh, Hey, the world will fail you. Uh, the arm of flesh will fail you. Uh, you'll even fail you. Uh, but he never will. Uh, and you can put uh, your trust in him. You can bank in him. Uh, hey, what a blessing to have. Uh, the rock of ages is our rock. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You can trust him. We find the trustworthy one. You see, once things begin to transition, he comes to the realization of truth. And now all of a sudden, he's starting to look at the Lord, the trustworthy one. That'll happen to you and I when we start relinquishing ownership. All of a sudden, there'll be a transition. We go from blaming God to blessing God. All of a sudden, we'll come to the truth. It's no longer about us. Uh, it's about Him. Uh, we get our eyes on Him. Uh, all of a sudden, we quit looking at the circumstance uh, and we get focused where we need to be focused. Uh, notice, if you will, the treasure in verse number 24. Look what the Bible says. Uh, uh, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Uh, therefore will I hope uh, in Him. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, you can have all this world's goods. Uh, my treasure is uh, that He is my portion. Uh, he is my treasure. Uh, hey, He's uh, uh, finer than the finest gold. Uh, he's better than all the riches of this world. Uh, you cannot outdo uh, uh, the Lord. Uh, 
and he's my Lord. Uh, he is my portion. Uh, therefore, I'll hope in him. Uh, I'm not hoping in a Baptist. Uh, I'm not hoping in an institution. Uh, I'm not hoping in an organization. Uh, I'm not hoping in a candidate. Uh, I'm not hoping in a king. Uh, I'm not hoping in people. Uh, my hope's in the Lord. Uh, I'm talking about the Lord of Lords uh, and the King of Kings. Uh, I'm talking about the one who's the omnipotent one. Uh, he's the almighty one. Uh, he's the omniscient one. Uh, he's the omnipresent one. Uh, he's the great God of glory uh, that threw the stars out there and called them all by name. Uh, hey, he's the one that tells the sun when to shine. Uh, he's the one that spins the earth on its axis uh, and keeps everything in order. Uh, that's my God. Uh, that's the one I hope in. Uh, my treasure is that he is mine uh, and I am his. Uh, what a blessing uh, to have the Lord tonight. Uh, mm. You got to be an absolute hermit to not see how bad this world's gotten since COVID. And you got to be a few fries short of a happy meal to think that it all happened by accident. Mm. Everything's happened by design. Because there's coming a day in the not too distant future when the Antichrist is going to take over. I'm glad I'll be out of here. Uh, but can I say there's a lot of people that are trying to find treasure in this world. All you're ever going to find is heartaches at the end of that rainbow. But I've got good news. You can have everlasting treasure where rust doesn't corrupt and the moth don't eat. What a blessing to have the Lord as my treasure. Notice, if you will, the timing. And here's where we have a problem. Look at verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for Him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. We don't like to wait. We want instant gratification. We're just like my little darling grandbaby right there. I love her more than life itself. There ain't anything that she and Sid don't already have, but it's mine. Hmm? But can I say... She has less patience than me. I'm talking about the instant the thought hits her brain, she wants it. And she don't want to wait two seconds for you to get it for her. She is utterly impatient. Can I say? That's the way we are towards God. Amen. We pray, and before we say amen, we want the answer. We don't want to wait on God's timing. Can I say this? You fellows that build a little bit. There's an old adage that says you measure twice and cut once. Why? You take your time and you do it right so you don't have to redo it. Anytime you rush, you're going to make mistakes. And we rush to everything. Now, what kind of sense does this make? Let me talk to somebody that's on the road all the time. Joshua. Now, how much sense does this make? That we'll fly into a restaurant, talk into a box, swing around, they throw food at us in a bag... And then we pull out, we get upset because they didn't put in our order the way we ask. Well, quit rushing. Go somewhere where you can sit down. Let them cook it, prepare it, instead of nuking it and throwing it at you. Huh? I don't care if you tell them no sauce or what sauce. They're not going to do it because you got some 15-year-old punk like him there and always think it's about girls. He's not caring about whether or not you had no pickle on that. Huh? Seriously, you ever see these kids on the other side of the drive-thru? If the screen doesn't tell them how to count change, they can't do it. 
And if you give them, if it's a 1905 and you give them 20 and a nickel, it blows their mind. They don't know. They're sitting there going, and they're looking at the screen. And you got to tell them, I just get a dollar back. That's it. And then they start to count up change. No, I want a dollar bill. That's why I gave you the nickel. Huh? Wise up, Colton. Huh? Count change. Huh? They don't even know how to use a watch. They got to look at their phone to see the digits, tell what time it is. We live in a messed up world. Well, if McDonald's and the 15-year-old can't get your order right because you rush through it, why would you want to rush through the things of God? God never does anything in a hurry. He always does everything according to His perfect will. And His timing is always right. So quit rushing Him and just learn to wait on Him. Learn to seek Him. You'll find His timing is always perfect. Hmm? Uh, I believe Miss Brittany sings that song. She said, Lord, I need it, I need it now. Uh, well, he knows when you need it. And he knows what you need. A lot of times what you think you need is really not what you need. You need to learn to wait on him. Amen. We don't like that. We don't like waiting on the Lord. We think God ought to be up to speed. Well, this is 2024. And God's speed is always the right speed. It'd do us all some good to sit back and meditate and read and pray and just wait on God. Because it's always right. I don't know how many men I've seen ruin their lives because they rushed to take a church when it wasn't the will of God. Uh, they ruined the church and they ruined their life because they're out of the will of God. I've seen so many people make so many rushed decisions only to pay for it on down the line. We see the timing. Notice the turning. Look at verse number 40. The Bible says, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Notice he's not, he's not blaming God here. He's not bitter here. It's no longer about mine own. Look what he says. Let us search and try our ways. He's saying, uh, we need to see what caused us to get broken in the first place. Uh, we need to find out what caused us to be bitter in the first place. Uh, we need to find out uh, why we felt betrayed in the first place. Uh, uh, it's not about God. Uh, God's doing everything right. Uh, must be about me. Uh, he said, let us search and try our own ways. Uh, and then uh, when we figure out uh, uh, where we messed up uh, he said and turn again unto the Lord uh, uh, can I say uh, what a blessing uh, when folks turn to the Lord uh, when they quit blaming him uh, when they quit trying to do it their way uh, when they get their eyes off of their situation uh, and say you know what uh, the Lord's never failed me uh, he's the trustworthy one uh, I'm the one got the problem not God uh, and they turn uh, and they get back to where they should have been all the while along. Uh, they get their eyes back on Jesus. Uh, I love that old song, Turn Mine Eyes Upon Jesus. Uh, let me look into his wonderful face. Uh, hey, uh, when we turn to the Lord, business picks up in our lives. Uh, we see the turning. Now watch what happens when he turns to the Lord. Notice the tribute he begins to offer. Look with me in verse 41. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. You know what he does? He starts worshiping now. Once he turns to the Lord in worship. You know why so many people come to church week in and week out and never worship? Because they're looking at their problems. Uh, they're looking at their circumstances. Uh, they're feeling betrayed. Uh, they've got bitterness in their heart. Uh, they've never uh, 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 really humbled themselves before God and turned to God. Uh, hey, when you get your eyes on Jesus uh, and you turn to the Lord, uh, it's a natural progression. Uh, 
You want to worship him. Uh, hey, uh, you want to throw up holy hands to heaven. You want to lift your heart to heaven. Uh, you come to the house of God uh, not to get out but to get in. Uh, you come to not look around and see what other people are wearing or doing. Uh, you come to hear from heaven. Uh, you come to rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. Uh, hey, what a blessing. You begin to offer tribute, which is worship. Uh, and hey, isn't he worthy of us? worship uh, you say preacher why should I worship him my life's a mess you're not in hell are you can I tell you those that are in hell are worshiping him tonight because they know he's worthy to be worshipped they know that he is justified in allowing them to go to hell because they rejected him and I say tonight he is worthy regardless of our circumstances regardless of what's going on in our lives, regardless uh, of how we feel. He's worthy to be worshipped. But the only ones that worship Him are the ones that have turned to Him, the ones that have got their eyes on Him. And then notice, if you will, the tranquility. Lord have mercy, I threw my glasses down in the floor. You know God's in that because I didn't step on them. Look at verse 57. The Bible says, Thou drawest, drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, Fear not. O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul, and thou hast redeemed my life. Verse 20 chapters, he's blaming God. He's bitter on God. He's finding fault in God. But we find after he has relinquished ownership in his life and turned to the Lord and let God have his way, notice what he says. He says, Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. You feel like God's far away from you? Why don't you come tonight and call upon him? Huh? He said, That's when God drew near. I believe James said it this way. Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Hmm? Then he said... Uh, Thou saidest, Fear not. The reason he's troubled it to be in this chapter, he says, uh, He's led me to darkness and there's no light. He's fears all around him. But here he says, The Lord said, Fear not. In other words, peace be still. Huh? And then he goes on to say, O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul, thou hast redeemed my life. And joy is picked back up in his life. Now he has peace, he has hope. All because he learned to relinquish the ownership. Corey Ten Bloom said this, If you look at the world, you will be distressed. If you look within, you will be depressed. If you look to God, you will be at rest. Some of you, you're depressed and distressed because you're looking in the wrong place. You're not looking to the Lord. Having a right relationship with the Lord hinges on relinquishing ownership or control to the rightful party. The Lord said this in 1 Corinthians 6.20, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 7.23, You are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. You see... Every moment that you try to own your life, you are dishonoring God because He paid for your life when He paid for your sins. He bought you off the auction block of sin. Nobody else could pay for your sins. He paid for your sins. He cleansed you, made you a new creature, adopted you into the family of God, but your life is no longer yours. It's His. He said, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. He owns you. You don't own yourself. Too many people, and I said this down in Revival in Georgia, and it really resonated with one fellow. He, taught, he testified the next night of it. And you've heard me say it. Too many people, Brother Ron, know Jesus as Savior, but they don't know Him as Lord. They want to own their own life. They want the thought, I'm going to heaven, my sins are forgiven. But Lord, 
just go over and sit on a shelf till I need you. He don't work that way. You'll end up bitter and broken. It'd be a good day in your life when you just relinquish ownership to God and let Him be the Lord of your life. Then you'll find tranquility. You'll find hope. You'll be able to worship. You'll be able to be a light to this world. You'll be a Bible Christian. God help us to have more Christians instead of more believers. They were first called Christians at Antioch. You listen to modern Christianity, they talk a lot about believers. They sure don't talk much about Christians. That's because too many are trying to own their own life. God help us to relinquish control and let Jesus truly be the Lord of our lives. It's a whole lot better when He's the one calling the shots. It takes a whole lot of pressure off of us. All we got to do is seek Him and wait on Him. Just follow where He leads and it'll be all right. Are you tired of the misery? Are you tired of the bitterness and brokenness? Are you tired of looking at all the mess? Just why don't you cast your eyes on Him? He's altogether lovely. Let Him truly, truly take the reins of your heart and friend, your life will never be the same. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, too many of your children are not living in victory because they're trying to own their own life. Lord, help us all to relinquish ownership to the rightful owner. It's you, the Lord, for you bought us. Now, Lord, I don't know the need of anybody's heart. I don't even know my own heart. I know it's deceitfully wicked. But Lord, I pray you'd speak to hearts now. Lord, there may be some here tonight that are trying to live a saved life, but they're not saved. Help them there to see their need of a Savior and come and believe on the Lord and be saved. Lord, there may be some here tonight that say, but Lord, they've never allowed you to be Lord in their life. God, I pray tonight they'd come and turn their eyes on you. Lord, you do a tremendous work in their lives. Lord, there may be some tonight, and all they can do is look at all the circumstances, look at all the troubles, look at all the problems, whether in their life, their community, or their world, they never can look above them, and they'll never get victory because they don't look to the Lord. I pray they'd come tonight and get some help. Whatever any other need is tonight, Lord, just speak to hearts. Bless this invitation. Glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.